uh, you all are well served uh, by your national leadership and by those who are working for you uh, in the halls of, uh, of Congress. Uh, this has obviously been a, a very important year, uh, continues to be a challenging year for dairy, uh, and I'm here today to talk uh, about a few things that I think are of interest to you, but I, I need to start by simply thanking the producers who are here for what you do every single day. You know, I don't think that in this country we thank you all enough, or as often as we should. I don't think we recognize uh, the extraordinary opportunity that we have in America because of the amazing productivity of our farmers and producers and our ranchers and growers. You know, I think about the fact that when we leave the grocery store in this country, uh, there's more money uh, in the wallet uh, and in the pocket because our farmers are so productive, we have such great diversity uh, that we spend about 10% of our overall income uh, for food. Uh, anywhere else in the world, people would spend 20, 25%, maybe as high as 50% uh, percent of their paycheck for food, which means that Americans have this amazing freedom to go out and buy a nicer car or live in a bigger home or put money aside at college for kids or maybe even have their retirement nest egg be a little bigger than it would otherwise be. It's an amazing flexibility and it's directly connected to agriculture. It's also true that less than 1% of America's population produces this extraordinary uh, array of food. And we often fail to realize that the rest of us who don't farm have essentially delegated the responsibility of feeding our families to the folks in this room and to tens of thousands of folks like you around the country, which has freed the rest of us up to consider other ways of making a living and pursuing our dreams. And 100 years ago or so, we wouldn't have that flexibility, that liberty, that freedom. We would be responsible ourselves for producing uh, food for, and fiber for our family. So American agriculture has been the linchpin of this great democracy and this great country. Uh, and it is uh, appropriate for us to acknowledge that and to say thank you uh, to the producers who are here uh, and to the generations of producers who came before you uh, because you have helped to make this country the great and powerful country that it is. So first and foremost, thanks uh, for what you do for all of us. Uh, Jim mentioned in his introduction uh, the incredible work that you all have helped us do on the nutrition side, and I, I would really be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that and thank you for that. You know, that's not something that necessarily would come uh, naturally to, to an ag group, uh, to think about the, the relationship between what you produce and, uh, and the future of this country. Uh, you may know this, but if you don't, I, I think it bears re repeating. This nutrition issue is a, a very large issue. Uh, our, country today has 15.8 million children who live in food insecure homes. Now, that means that at some point in time in a month, for almost 16 million kids, that there may not just be enough food for mom, dad, and child uh, to be well fed. <clears throat> in addition to that, we have nearly a third of our youngsters uh, who are obese or at risk of being obese. Uh, and those youngsters will deal with self-image issues. Uh, as they go through school, they, they'll deal with uh, disease, chronic diseases. Uh, we're seeing uh, the onset of uh, diabetes w way too soon uh, for youngsters. And they'll carry those uh, chronic diseases into adulthood, and the reality is that they will uh, not be as productive as God intended them to be, and certainly won't uh, be as su successful in school as they need to be. Uh, they won't be as productive for uh, the nation as we need them to be in a very competitive global economy. And they will carry with them these chronic diseases that will be expensive and their health care costs and our overall health care costs will be significantly increased. Again, the dairy producers stepped up and said, you know, we can do something about this. We have a product which, which is healthy, a product which can provide uh, a pretty good bang for the nutrition buck, uh, and we want to be in a position to uh, promote our product as a way of dealing with some of these challenges. And so you linked up with the NFL with the Fuel Up to Play 60, 73,000 schools, 38 million students are now being positively impacted by this message that you helped to create. Uh, you also have been a, uh, a strong proponent of increased breakfast participation. 
And you know, I, there, there are studies now that show that youngsters who have breakfast, who come to school well-fed, uh, or who have the opportunity, if they, they can't, for whatever reason, uh, to secure breakfast at school in the classroom, that they actually will do better in school, they will stay in school, they will graduate from high school at greater rates. You know, it's really an important deal. Uh, and you all have, ha have stepped up in a very big way. Uh, and we have tried to be a partner uh, in looking at the standards improving the quality of the meals in schools, uh, understanding and appreciating the role that dairy plays in that. Most recently, well, we decided that, uh, that Greek yogurt could be a substitute uh, or an alternative uh, to traditional protein sources, uh, since kids are really attracted uh, to this product. Uh, that's obviously gonna create greater demand uh, for dairy products across the United States. We, we tried this in a, several pilots, and it was so successful that we decided to make it available across the board. So, we're going to continue to work with you, continue to work with the NFL, continue to promote Fuel Up to Play 60, uh, but you're making a fundamental difference in the lives of kids uh, in a very significant way. And it's not just their life, it's not just the economic security of this country, it's also the national security of this country. Um, I could bring up here, and maybe you've heard of, from them before, retired admirals and generals who are very concerned about the future of our military. Uh, the reality is that Folks in rural America send more of their sons and daughters into the military as a percentage of population, so it's something that you all care about. And you would be surprised to know that the pool of youngsters who are physically fit uh, for military service is not very large. About 25% of youngsters, 19 to 24 years, I call them youngsters, I guess maybe they wouldn't. I guess at my age I can call anybody youngster. Um, <laughs> these kids are, are, are only 25% of them are physically fit for, uh, and fit for military service. Only 25%, so that's a fairly small pool to draw from if you have an all-volunteer military. So it's about national security, it's about healthcare costs, it's about economic security. You all are doing your part, uh, and you are making a statement about the important role that agriculture and agricultural producers, farmers and producers play uh, in trying to advance uh, this nation's future.